Let's talk tequilas today. Hi, I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano, the chef and owner of Aroma Time Bistro in Ellenville, New York. And we love tequila here at the restaurant like a lot of our guests do. But our guests often comment to me and they say, Marcus, where do you get these awesome tequilas? I was just at a store or a liquor store. I was just at a restaurant that had 125 tequilas and they didn't have one tequila that you have on your shelf. How is that possible? First of all, I like to buy all of my tequilas from small distributors. Most restaurants, most liquor stores buy from larger distributors that stock a bunch of different things that are all basically larger brands. And they have portfolios, they have books that are a half an inch thick and you look through it and you're like, oh my gosh, between the wine, the spirits, the tequila, the vodka, it gets confusing. When I buy from a distributor, I like the, I like the distributor's pages to be 25 pages, 50 pages the most, where we can actually look through there and have a conversation with the salesperson on the products that they have. It's way different dealing with a salesperson that has five or 6,000 products in their book versus somebody who has 50, 100, 200. You'll get a vast, vast different experience with a salesperson that way when they know the products that they're selling, not the products like the big brands that they're told to sell and meet quotas upon. So, tequilas. First thing you need to know about tequila is the NOM number, N-O-M, that's a government regulation out of Mexico. First of all, tequilas, let's back this up. Tequilas only come from Mexico. They only come from a certain region in Mexico. So you can't make tequila in America. You can't make it in Canada. You can't make it in Italy or other South American countries. It only comes from Mexico. There's about 1,600 different registered tequilas, but there's only about 100 distilleries. And I'm gonna use the term distillery as an open-ended term because some of these distilleries are more like factories. And if you do the quick math, 100 distilleries, 1,600 brands, some of these distilleries are averaging 15 different tequilas per distillery. And these are many, they can produce many different brands. Now you have some tequila, tequilas that are only making one tequila. So for that, other distilleries have to make up and they have to produce far more to get to that 1600 overall number in our math equation. So that's why I use the term factory. These are factories. Now you picture a winery, you picture people that, that own a winery, that walk outside, have their vines, get the grapes, go inside their winery, and everything's done within a certain vicinity right there, and the product is made. Well, in a factory, that wouldn't be like that. So in a tequila factory, you're buying a commodity product of agave. Now, first of all, all tequila does not need to be 100% agave. Tequila can be 51% agave and 49% some type of other sugar form, like corn syrup or something else in it to make tequila. So if you're drinking well tequila at a restaurant especially, I would be very, even, even Cuervo, some of Cuervos are not 100% agave. So you can have 40, 49% corn syrup, genetically modified corn. Who knows what, what could be in there? So it's not always the real deal on tequila. You have to be very, you have to understand that the tequila says one made from 100% agave. So if you go to a restaurant and you order, you order tequila, especially in a margarita or something, make sure, read the label, make sure it's 100% agave and you know what you're getting. Now back to the non numbers. So some of these distilleries are massive factories, they're buying this commodity product, they're producing stuff for many different businesses. And what I mean by businesses is you and I can decide, hey, we wanna have, we have a great name for a tequila brand, let's make our own tequila. So we contact uh, non number 1501, which whatever their name is in Mexico and say, hey, we want you to make our tequila for us. Here's my recipe, or I don't have a recipe. Can you make something that maybe has a little minty aftertaste or this or that, whatever, a little creamier on the palate, a little harsher that's an oak age or whatever. Can you make that for me? And they're gonna say, of course we can, because that's their business. They are basically a co-packer. They will make tequila for anybody that has money that will give it to them to make tequila. That's how their business model is set up. Now, when you come to a small guy um, that has that only makes one tequila for that distillery, that is their business. That is their farm, that's their business, that's their house, that's their residence, that's their passion, okay? And a lot of the tequilas that we have come from that kind of situation where the that distillery only makes one tequila. It's their family business, it's their family tradition, it's their pride, it's their passion. They're not worried about making tequila for all these other places to supplement their income or just to have their business model to begin with. So I wanna talk about a few different ones that we have that are really interesting. Uh, this one is called Siete Leguas. Siete Leguas is, they've been referred to as the Mandavis of the tequila world. 
uh, small family, uh, family owned. I think this is over 60 years old, this distillery. They used to, they used to make tequila for Patron. This is a small place. They still, they still turn the wheel, the agave crusher, the Tahona wheel with a mule. And there's a very, very few distilleries left that still do it with a mule. All of it's done hydro, uh, um, electronically, hydraulically. It's all done. It's all machine. It's all factory. They're still, they still have the mule. They're grinding the agave, pressing it into the juice to ferment it. So they made Patron from 1990 to 2002, and they were behind that. And all of a sudden, Patron, because somebody went to them and said, hey, can you make tequila for us? And they said, sure. When Patron sold out, when the label was sold, to Bacardi and Patron was blown up. This small little distillery said, there's no way we can keep up with production. There's no way that we're capable of making that and that we're not in that type of business to make mass produced tequila. So that link was totally separated now. Now Patron is made in their own big factory, okay? It's a factory. It's, it's, it's you know, factory. Let's face it, they're all over the world. It is a factory Patron. So Siete Leguas is very cool. Um, awesome, awesome story, awesome family. Um, let's see, Pueblo Vieja. This is awesome, tequila. This is their 104 proof. This one is made by Carmen. Now Carmen uh, is was at one point the only female distiller owner in the world, distillery owner in the world, um, in South, especially in, the, in South America. She, um, actually think it back, she was the only one in South America, Central and South America. Her husband was killed in the 1990s over the agave wars with the price escalated over agave. He was killed. They thought they would push her out. She held on to the distillery. Very, very female friendly, woman friendly distillery. They have daycare. They promote women in the workplace. They do a lot to promote women as far as work and taking care of them. What a sweetheart this lady is. She makes fantastic tequila. This is Pueblo Viejo. They make several different ones. I would definitely suggest trying some of this it's a great it's a great cause because you are supporting a uh, woman in the woman in the workplace and they do have a daycare there and uh really really awesome they do give a great tour down there too um by the way set the leguas when i first started using them um 10 years ago i posted a blog post posted it online and the owner of the distillery emailed me and said marcus thank you so much for your support we welcome you to come visit our distillery our farm our house, please check out what we're doing if you ever get to, to down here to, uh, where tequila's made. Now, for me, that goes a long way because Patron is never gonna send me a personal invite from the owner, right? Because there really is no owner of these huge, massive corporations. Of course, you can say, well, Bacardi's family owned, but it's such a massive, massive um, um, company that's worldwide. 200 different brands Bacardi owns, 27 production facilities, not distilleries, they're production facilities is what they're called. Um, so, don't think by any means of Bacardi just because there's a family behind it that it's a small business doing the right thing. There's a lot of businesses that are, still are independently owned, but they might not be playing fair and they go out and buy their brands, absorb them up, cut jobs out in the communities where they, where they bought the brands from. Fortaleza. Fortaleza is awesome stuff. Fortaleza, this was the... Uh, this is the grandson of Sousa. Sousa was one of the first tequila companies to sell out. He sold out in the 60s. But the, the company who bought Sousa was not interested in the farm or the distillery. So that basically set vacant for years upon years. Uh, there was a museum there called Fortaleza, which is where the Sousa was originally made. Sousa is you know, a big brand now. It's made from commodity products. It's made from you know, in, in a big facility, production facility. So the grandson went and said, Grandpa, I want to start doing tequila again. And he goes, well, everything's there. Fire it up. So they are still using the mule, uh, the stone, uh, the stones that are pulled by mules to grind the agave. And Fortaleza was born. This tequila is outrageous. This is one of our best-selling tequilas. Uh, so the grandson took over the museum and opened up Fortaleza Tequila. And amazing, amazing stuff. Um, Sempre Valles. This gets so specific because this person, this tequila company, actually gets specific with where the agave is coming from. It's coming from lowland agave, highland agave, wherever it's coming from. They list on here where it's coming from. So it's like reading a bottle of California wine and saying, oh, the grapes are from Napa, the grapes are from Sonoma, oh, the grapes are from Anderson Valley. So they're actually telling you where the agave comes from, the elevation levels, because it's 
agave can be drastically different from the elevation, the tequila can be different from the elevation levels that the agave is grown in. Just like how scotch berries in, uh, in Scotland, all the different regions. So they're pulling from different regions and labeling it very, very specific. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? Aha, this one is very cool. This is called, this is from Green Bar. Green Bar is a company out in LA and they contracted this out, of course, because like I said, anybody can contract tequila out. The cool thing about this company is they plant a tree for every bottle that they sell of all their spirits. They make a bunch of different spirits, rum, gin, vodka, um, liqueurs. So every bottle they sell, they plant a tree. And as, um, because I was so impressed with that, I said, you know what, for every bottle I buy from you guys, I'll plant a tree. So of course they make some awesome liqueurs like jasmine liqueur, hibiscus, and I would recommend a hibiscus margarita. You take this with this tequila or any tequila you like, and have a hibiscus margarita. Hibiscus is an indigenous flower uh, down in Central America and in the islands in the Caribbean. You may, can make hibiscus soda in certain countries down there. So hibiscus is, is part, of their, part of their beverage repertoire in Central America. Um, really cool, 1921. <laughs> last time, uh, our last trip to Mexico, actually my wife was in Mexico a year ago for a wedding. She found this and they told her at the store that this stuff is not available in the United States. They go, there's no way you can get this in the United States. It's not, it's a small production, it's just not. They hyped it up. My wife looked at the guy and goes, we have that on our bar. We own a bar in New York and it's on our bar right now. And I had to send a picture, picture to my wife so she could send, show the guy right then and there that we have it here in New York. And it was something that they thought was only available for them down there. Now, in, in, uh, um, um, just for your information, some of those brands that are in Mex that are in the U.S. here don't exist in Mexico, and that's how it is with a lot of things. Like Sambuca, Romana Sambuca does not exist in Italy; it only exists here in America. Because these are these are brands that are created for the American market or the export market. So, you know, Patron might not be as big in Mexico. It's probably there and it's there, but you might have other tequilas that are more popular. Same things with with like this right with any spirit that you get from anywhere, uh, because they make spirits. For a certain, uh, they make and all these a lot of these things with a catchy logo, a catchy label, a brand name that's going to want to make you to buy it when you sits out on a shelf. And they know Americans are so into catchy things, cool names, and into trendy things. So thus, like Grey Goose is a very trendy vodka, and you have a lot of music artists making their own vodkas now and champagne and this and that because they know that us Americans would want to buy that. It's a marketing ploy. So. Um, a lot of the tequilas that I had here today are small independent, so there is no flair. It's, it, what, what they're sending here is the same stuff that they're drinking there themselves and it's going into their own communities. And I think that's super important that it's just not a brand that was just created out of thin air. Because like, for example, Bombay Gin never really existed. It was, not, it was never a distillery. It was created out of thin air, that brand, for marketers, same with Grey Goose, to say, let's make a gin that can be marketed to the American market that has these attributes. And there we go. Same thing with Grey Goose. Let's build something with a high profile. And then all of a sudden, once these brands grow up, grow and get bigger, they get sold off to other companies. They get traded like baseball cards sometimes. Like, who owns Dewar's this year? It's like, was, was a joke for a while. Is Dewar's owned by Brown Foreman? Is Dewar's owned by Diageo? Is Dewar's owned by it, William Grant? Who owns Dewar's this year, right? Who owns some of these companies? Because they say, oh, this, this company is no longer profitable for us because we don't have the means to distribute it like another company would. So let's just sell it off to another company. And that's what happens in that world. So we try to stick to, to, to tequilas and all the spirits behind the bar that are still owned by individual businesses, individual families, that that is their business. Now I mentioned Bacardi earlier. Bacardi is an independent brand, but rum is not their business anymore. Patron is their business. Um, Martini Rossi is their business. They have 200 different labels that those are all their businesses. And for them, it's, it's a focus of, of expanding all of their products onto a global market, okay? A lot of these people here don't have envisions of, of or don't have the reality of, or the capability of making a global product. Thus, as we know with Siete Leguas in the beginning of the video is they had to decline on making the Patron when Patron was sold to Bacardi because that's not their vision to sell it to the world. Their vision is to make a product with passion. And um, stop down, 
I'll be happy to taste you on any of these tequilas here. There's a lot of awesome tequilas, and we have a few more behind me that I didn't pull out today, and there's a couple more that I didn't even, that I didn't even talk about. Hacienda Vieja, one of my favorite ones from Margaritas. I actually like from Margaritas, I like ones that are that are aged a little bit. I like a Reposado as opposed to a Silver, as opposed to an Anejo. Anejos are darker, they're aged longer in oak. These have less oak. These have no oak when it's a silver or a white tequila, um, but this is one of my personal favorites in a margarita. So stop on down to Aroma Time, taste some tequila, have a margarita.